So in one of my last videos, I talked about mediums and about asking it as given. I talked about Abraham Hicks. I talked about a documentary called Tuning In that it was completely, I loved it. It was just a great documentary. Because of the influence of the documentary and because of the book, Asking It Is Given, it led me to understanding mediums a little better and I wanted to share with you my experience and my knowledge of a medium that I'm now following. And this medium, his name is Daryl Anka and the being that he is channeling through himself is named Bashar. And the reason why I'm following this medium is because over the last six, seven years, I've been testing out what's being said. Um, some of these things that have been explained have been coming into fruition. And because of those facts and because of that truth and because of those revelations that Bashar has given, it has made me very interested in what he has to say and in where we are going in the next three to four or five years. I have no ties with him, with his channel. I have no ties with anything. I'm not promoting this for any other reason, just that um, to share wisdom and to share light, shed light on some information that's been going around that is, uh, it's uh, uncanny. <laughs> it's really, it's really amazing to me. So, so with that, let's get started. <laughs> So I explained in my other video that um, I found this documentary floating around on YouTube called Tuning In, and I really, really enjoyed it. Now, I think the way that the algorithms work, and hopefully the way they work for my channel, that, you know, it'll help spread out the word a little bit. Um, when you follow something, YouTube is like, oh, okay, you like this. We're going to give you a little bit more, or have you seen this? We want you to keep on watching YouTube. I'm guessing it's because of after watching the documentary Tuning In, and because of looking up information on Abraham Hicks that Bashar started coming into my feed. I, f I remember Bashar from the documentary tuning in and he's the one who stood out to me most. I felt that his words were fast and true and were just on it. So when some of these videos popped up, I took a look. I saw a lot of the usual things, uh, some things that were very um, similar to Abraham Hicks's um, posts that are on the internet and many of it was about you know, manifesting your dreams, manifesting money, manifesting love in your life, just trying to get things. Those vins, vi those videos I wasn't too interested in. You know, I think that's what um, those videos are out there and people are posting them quite a bit because they that's what they want. You know, that's what they're looking for. Now, there was a video that was posted, I'm not sure if it was 2015 or the beginning of 2016, but I saw a video from Bashar and he started to explain about how we were going through these transitions. I believe he talked about a year of revelation or a year of enlightenment. And these were during the years of 2015, 2016. During that time in life, I was going through some crazy upheavals and these big changes um, that I wasn't really looking for. It seems like they kind of landed on my lap and they were huge challenges, but because life is an adventure to me and an opportunity to make my own legend and create my own legend, I decided to jump right in. From what I gathered at the time, the message was pretty much that we were in a day and age where the truth was starting to be revealed. And I remember hearing years earlier in 2012 that the whole Mayan thing wasn't supposed to be that the earth was supposed to necessarily blow up or any kind of crazy stuff like that, like you might've seen in the movies, but it was described as a time when the veil would drop. So I remembered that. And from listening to Bashar's explanation of the year of enlightenment and how things were going to change and we would be seeing a lot more truth, what I believe back in 2015 and 2016 is that the veil would drop kind of meant we are going to be able to see a lot more of what we've been hiding. So I was interested. I was really interested in this. I was really on board for listening to new messages and listening to like-minded people who wanted to know what are these changes that might be coming because it really feels like we're on the precipice of like change. So back to this video about 2015, 2016, there's a video floating around on YouTube where Bashar is saying, in 2016, it all changes. The fall of 2016. He explained that in the fall of 2016, everything would change. Okay, now what did that mean? The fall of 2016. Now there's plenty of like doomsday stuff out there, you know, 
Um, you can look it up on the internet. There's so many different things, just like there was 2012. But one of these like doomsday things, and one of these things has to do with the Jewish calendar, the Hebrew calendar. And it does coincide with the time of fall and how during this time of fall, um, September 22nd, 23rd, I believe, is that things were supposed to change in some given year. Now, I know this is like, seems kind of crazy or it's crazy conspiracy stuff or just like doomsday stuff, but that's the fall of 2016. I thought maybe that's might what it be. I don't get too stuck on these things and they don't drive me crazy and they don't, you know, have me starting to look up, you know, wh where I need to find a bunker somewhere to hide or anything. But it is interesting and I like talking about it with my wife. 2016 also had to do with something else though too that year. And I thought, well, there's an election coming this year and would it have to be that? And I truly thought at the time, nah, that's just an election. Like, big deal. A new president, that's really going to change anything? But although he had also been talking about the year of enlightenment and how certain truths were starting to come out, and when I started realizing on the way to um, Trump's pre presidency is that there seemed to be a lot of truth coming out. All of a sudden, a lot of this like anger and rage and frustration in everyone, you know, it just all over the world, it seemed, it seemed to be showing a lot more. And the truth was scary, but it was the truth. So could the fall of 2016 be associated with that in some way and be associated with the presidency. I just thought, well, I guess we'll see in the fall of 2016, which was months and months away, but it was coming. Another thing that he was really big on saying is, and mind you, this was in 2015, I think this video came out. He was saying, when you look at 2020, you'll realize you got there because of what happened in 2016. So let me go over that again. 2015, he was saying this, okay? But he was saying, in 2020, you're going to be realizing that the reason why you are dealing with the things in 2020 is because of what happened in 2016. The truth is, at that time, when I heard that and I discussed it with my wife, we thought like, wow, what if this is something really cool? What if in 2016, something happens, good or bad, but it talks about 2020 being the result of that. And what if 2020 is just like this huge change, changes that we've all been looking for as a global community of, you know, being able to take care of ourselves a little better and manage energy better, manage our planet better, you know, and health and wealth and nature, everything, you know, our global community. What if it comes together by 2020 because of this? That is truly what I thought at the time. If you want to really know who I am, I guess, you'd have to see that that was my hope. I guess I'm a hopeful person and I don't think I'm being negative when I give a reflection of 2020 is that 2020 has been a really rough year. So as 2017 came along, 2018 came along, I felt like in some ways because I heard the news and because I took it in that I was a bit prepared to understand like that doesn't mean we're immune to it, honey. You know, me and my wife, we're going to have to be going through this too. So let's do it together with love and with taking care of our kids protecting ourselves and being happy. And throughout these challenges, it was weird because during these feeds on my YouTube over the last, you know, three or four years, I wasn't seeing anything anymore from Bashar. It didn't seem to be in my feed and I didn't go out looking for it too much. I don't think it was until about 2019, maybe, maybe 2018, that I saw a video of him and it looked up to date and I clicked on it and he said, so how are you all doing? <laughs> And there was a laugh from the crowd and he said, I explained to you 2016, what would be happening? You got to understand this is part of, you know, you still have a choice in a lot of these things that are going on. And I listened to that video and it gave me some kind of comfort, but it gave me an understanding and it made me really kind of think, it's like, man, this Bashar guy, he might have some answers to what's coming up. In the beginning of 2020, a video of Bashar started floating around on the internet and it was him talking to a group and he said, get ready because 2020 is going to be nuts. And I remember seeing this video before we went on quarantine and before there were a lot of protests, a lot of changes that have been going on, these new challenges that have arrived in our lives. And I listened to that message closely because I heard certain things being told that I thought, 
you know what, this guy's been kind of spot on in the past, so maybe there's some important things that I can hear that can help me plan out this next year and past that. I put a link down below connecting to that video, but I would like to take this opportunity to talk to you about some of the key points that he spoke about so that you can think for yourself and decide whether it's some things that you might want to listen to, if you should heed some advice from someone who might be wiser than us. Okay, one of the main things that he talks about in these new videos and these new things that are going about is to keep calm in the eye of the storm. And I remember a woman getting up and saying like, so you're saying pretty much that you can't avoid the storm. And he explained, yes, that's pretty much what it is. You're going to see a storm, but that doesn't mean it has to come into your peaceful center. If you go out into the storm, you're going to probably get caught up in it. But if you recognize that you can stay in the eye in the storm and that you'll find peace there, you can make a choice to be safe. He also discussed about how during this time, it was a time of isolation and that it was like sequestering on an island. And that during this time, that it was a great time to be able to make the changes that were going to be needed to be made to get through this time. When he talked about this with the isolation part, we weren't in quarantine yet. And Bashar explained that with these changes, this might be an opportunity for you to come out the other side of all of this havoc clean and clear of all the things that you need to leave behind. He also explained that during this time of isolation, it was still a good time to be creative, that you can be creative and follow your passion in this time of isolation. And that would be helpful in terms of getting you through this waiting time. Okay, now when he talks about coming out clean on the other side, it, clean from what? And he goes over this. He explains about how people with a much more fear-based mentality of way or way of living would have a difficult time getting through these times and coming out on the other side okay. This is what he called, and the next point was going through the eye of the needle. This video came out months later, but he discussed going through the eye of the needle. Right away, eye of the needle for me, you know, sprung up my teachings in Catholicism, which Jesus talked about how it is much easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. I take that story, of course, as a metaphor, because I don't think it necessarily means that you have to throw out your money and get ready to pass through the eye of the needle. But I do believe it means that we have to make changes if you want to get into the kingdom of heaven. Or even not necessarily the kingdom of heaven, but a better place. And I think we all know that as human beings. is You have to earn it sometimes. The next very important point that Bashar had to make about getting through the eye of the needle is that it was going to take forgiveness. Forgiveness is key. That's what he kept on saying is forgiveness, forgiveness. Let go of those people who have not sought you out to say sorry, who are not regretting the bad that they've done. Just forgive them. It does not matter. He said that through forgiveness, you will get through the eye of the needle and come out sparkling clean on the other side. So I'm good. I'm good with forgiveness. I really pride myself on that. And I'm, it, you know, those things that happen that are bad in your life, you know, or when people really attack you, to me, it's just part of the story. It's part of the legend. It's part of any great story has that. So why would I hold on to it and not live my story out? just because I want to hold on to something. I learned this a long time ago and it's helped me to keep on going forward and keep on being happy. And when people wonder why I still have that or why I want to give back or why I feel so great is because, probably because I have a lot of energy because of the forgiveness aspect of my life. And I hope that the story that I just shared with you about forgiveness and how easy it can be might help you because I've come across a lot of people in life and realized that they can't just do that. It's not that easy for them. I'm here to explain that it is easier than you think. It is possible to make the changes. It's just, you know, this little trick in your mind that tells you that you have to win. But when you realize and look at yourself and realize, isn't this the way a kid can be when they're on the playground and they're just getting really angry because they want to win, they don't want anyone pushing them down. Do we see that there are grown-ups that never got past that playground and that now they're like in a completely different playing field and they will not bend because they don't want to look like a loser that's what gets you stuck that's the trick that your mind plays on you it plays it on the weak-minded that you can't let go of certain things 
So I'd like to encourage you in some ways, think of yourself as having a stronger mind, a stronger heart. Actually, forgiveness is just the key. It's freedom. And if what I'm saying doesn't make sense to you, then maybe just have honest eyes and look at what you see out there in the world today. Some of these public figures, they're supposed to be important and have so much status. When you see that they're still fighting like kids, look at them for who they really are. Look, are they that child on the playground saying pretty much, I'm not backing down, you're not going to get me, not realizing that people aren't exactly trying to get you? I'm saying this so that people with ears who want to change or want to be able to grow can listen and realize forgiveness isn't really that tough. You can do it. And even from my own experience, why would I be doing it nonstop or be so proud of doing it? The reason why is because forgiveness, after practicing it enough over year after year, it's like, this is the best thing ever. Like forgiveness is really a great thing. People got to know this. And this is what Bashar explained. He said that forgiveness is the key to passing through the eye of the needle. Another point that Bashar talked about, he talked about wiping off the superficial things that you're keeping in your life, wiping off these different beliefs that you were brought up with and just getting rid of them because they're not truly who you are at your core. I don't believe that racism is ever really going away, but I do believe that a very young mind is a mind that is racist. It's very much like a duality kind of mind, like black versus white, woman versus man, you're on the girls' team, I'm on the guys' team. And when I see this duality, I see that there are many grown-ups who are still stuck in it. So when he talks about shedding off some of these old views or these old beliefs that don't really serve you, I think there's things like that, things like racism, things that should have been let go of a long time ago. And in fact, I really do believe in terms of this passing through the eye of the needle is that it's going to hold you back. And he described that these are the things that are anchoring you and holding you back from becoming the you who you truly are. So he explained, cut those ties, snap those cords, let go of those things that are holding you back so that you can become the better you. I have a video about cutting energetic cords and disconnecting from things so that you can grow and go further. And um, I'll put that in a card up here so that you can take a look at it. Just click on it and it should send you straight to the video. And I have to say that it's a really freeing thing. And it's great when I hear Bashar saying this because it's kind of like, I think I did this. I did this years and years ago. So I think I'm kind of on the right path here. And that's about it. That's pretty much what it was is that these changes are going on. Stay calm, have peace in the eye of the storm. Get ready to pass through that eye of the needle by letting go of everything that you need that doesn't belong to you anymore. Things that are holding you back from being a better you or connecting to your higher self. And of course, number one on the whole thing is that he just nonstop is talking about forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. So thank you for watching the video. Um, I have links, like I said, throughout this thing to different videos that kind of connect to what's being said here. And I'm really excited. I guess because I'm a writer, I'm a storyteller, I believe in story, I love legend, and that helps me to not be afraid of the dark times, because I do know that after the dark times is when you go into the light, and that's what I'm looking forward to, past 2020, past 2021, past 2022, and I'm sharing this video so that we can share it together, and so that you can succeed, and find a new way, find a new place, find a new you where we can all thrive and make this world a much better place. Okay, peace.